Hello and welcome to Matrix Tutorials. In this episode, we're going to talk about the permissions model in Matrix to prepare the ground for the next Matrix tutorial, how to deploy Mjolnir, a moderation bot for your community. In previous episodes, we have seen how to deploy your own home server, which can be pretty useful to really have control over where your community lives. When building communities, you want people to get along well, be able to talk casually or even to talk seriously about issues they're working on. If your community is public, you probably want it to be a welcoming place for newcomers that makes them want to stick around and join the fun. One critical aspect to achieve this is proper moderation. Moderation can mean many things from establishing rules in your community to who enforces them, how people can build decisions and much more. Today, we're going to have a look at how Matrix defines permissions and enforces them out of the box. We're going to talk about some of the gory details such as power levels, state events, ACLs and some tools to inspect them. Next week, we'll see how to deploy your own Mjolnir to, to make your life easier. For this example, I'm going to use Element since it's a well-established client and stable one, but many more exist. You can visit the client section of the matrix.org website to browse them and choose another one if Element is not your thing. When you create a room, by default, you are the administrator of this room. When someone joins it, they are just a regular user. If they start misbehaving, you can redact their messages, kick them, or if they really insist, you can even ban them. Let's explore that in practice in the client before we inspect what happens behind the scenes. So I created the room. I can check uh, I'm the only person in this room by clicking on the room information, go to people, and I can see I'm the only person in this room. If I click on my profile, I can see my role in this room uh, is actually a power level and I'm administrator. Let's get back to the room settings. I can go to the roles and permissions tab and I can see I'm the only privileged user. Tibiscus at matrix.org is me and there is no other user at the moment, but I could add someone else, uh, give them a different privilege. Then we have a list of permissions for what people can do in this room. The first one is the default role, and that's the role people are going to be granted when they join the room. So by default, people will get the role default. To send messages, people need to get the role default to invite users. You need to be a moderator to change settings, remove users or kick users, uh, ban users, etc. You need to be a moderator, and there is a lot of settings here. I'm going to uh, get back to send messages for a second. It can seem a little silly that uh, by default, somebody, everybody can, can send messages in a room, but this is not necessarily always the case. Sometimes you might want to get a room for announcements, for example, in which case to send messages, you will want only moderator or authorized people to do so. Uh, sometimes you just want to allow people to cool down a little uh, in a room because the conversation got a bit heated, so you turn the send messages setting to moderator for a few minutes to give some time to people to breathe before the conversation um, carries on. So you can change settings to default, moderator, admin or custom level. If I click on custom level on a default uh, setting, it displays zero. If I click on custom levels when the setting was moderator, it displays 50. And if I click on custom level when it was admin, I can see 100. We're going to get back to that a bit later. But before we have a deeper look at the technicalities, let's see what happens when we have more interaction in the room. So another user is going to join the room and send a few messages. So that other users is, user is going to say, Hello, I'm a new user. Aha, evil message. And me in my client, I'm going to tell them uh, I'm opposed to evil messages and I can just redact their message. I can remove the message. I can give a reason for that, but I don't really have to. Um, I can kick them as well, so I could go click on the, on their avatar and go to remove from room if I wanted to kick them and I could uh, ban them later. But before we do that, we can have a look at the technicalities. So quite a few things happen. Let's explore. The first approach to explore everything is to inspect the source event for everything that happened in the room. 
we can hover the message, for example, this one, click on view source, and we can see it's a JSON event, uh, so a JSON object that has a content field that is another JSON object, the actual message that was sent, and a bunch of metadata. I can do that for the other one as well, view source, body, it's a text message that says I'm a new user, metadata, etc. same thing, okay. Uh, those are timeline events. We can uh, so we, we can see that the, the, the room is nothing more than a, a bunch of JSON objects, a succession of JSON objects. Both the home server and the client read those JSON objects and try to make sense of them, display what is relevant to their user, allow them to do things or not. And when I say both the client and server read the JSON object, you have to keep in mind that in the case of encrypted messages, the content of the JSON is completely opaque to the server because it's end-to-end -end encrypted and the server doesn't have a key. In this example, uh, this is a public room, so it's not encrypted. What we have been looking at are timeline events. So this is the timeline where the messages are sent, but there is an another kind of event called the state events. To explore them, we can go to uh, the message field and type DevTools is going to uh, show a, a pop-up where we can explore the room state. And I can watch two uh, state events in particular here uh, that are interesting. The room member one, so I can see all the members uh, of this room. And if I click on uh, tibiscus at matrix.org, I can see that the content, which is what I was interested in, is uh, Tibiscus is my display name and the membership is joined because I joined the room and the same thing happened for tib.ergastad.org uh, there is a display name, an avatar URL and a membership that is joined and if we have a look at the room power level we can see that this is a much longer uh, event so as always what we are really interested in is the content uh, thing so we can see that there is a lot in common uh, with the UI we have seen in the room settings. We can see that to set the room, you need to be a power level 50. Uh, to change the address of the room, you need to have the power level 50. To set up encryption, you need to have the power level 100. To change the room name, you need to be power level 50, etc. And to invite key product people, you need to have power level 50 as well. And we have also the users here. Uh, this is all the users that have privileges, and we can see this is tibiscus at matrix.org that has 100. It doesn't say admin, it says 100. So, uh, to, keep, to keep things simple, we could say a state event is about life and, and rules of the room and its users, as opposed to timeline events that are mostly about sending the content. From the pure matrix per perspective, there is no such thing as an administrator. It's only a label that element added on top of your power level. The power level is an integer that ranks your authority in a matrix room. There is one power level per user and per room. In practice, and in most cases, when you create a room, you will get the power level 100. I say in most cases, since this is just a recommendation of the specification. Some server administrator can modify their server to run the power level 1000 to room creators uh, by default, for example. Now, uh, let's ban the user Tib here. I can kick him, so I can remove him from the room. This is not yet a ban, because the user can join back. But before it does that, let's inspect state events. I can go to the room state, go to room member, and see that Tib has left. Now, Tib is going to join. I can go back to the DevTools, explore the room state. If I go to the room member, I can see that team is joined now. And it's uh, it supersedes uh, the, the membership leave that we had here. Now, if I ban that silly tib, I can go to the DevTools again, and I can see if I explore the room state, Room member, Tib, I can see the membership has changed to ban. Uh, this is useful because the room is going to remember that the user was banned and if they want to join back, 
uh, this state event is going to say, no, you are not allowed to join, you are banned. Sometimes you want to ban more than a user, you may want to defederate from an entire home server, and that's something Matrix allows you to do. The tool to do that is an ACL. To make it simple, it's a JSON object you send in a room as an administrator that allows you to define what are the users and servers banned. There is no simple UI to amend them, but we can use the dev tools to at least have a look at one of them in a room. So let's go to Matrix HQ, for example. I'm not an administrator there, but I can go to the dev tools. And Safari is taking some time. Come on, Safari. Okay, I can explore the room state and I can explore the M room server ACL and I can see the content of it. So by default, it allows everyone, it's a wildcard, and it denies a significant list of servers and it doesn't have to be each user banned individually. Next week, we'll see how to deploy a bot that allows us to update ACLs without having to care about all the technicalities and that makes our life generally easier when it comes to moderation at scale. See you around and take care.